Hello people. So today I'm going to make a steam pudding and it's one of my mum's recipes. Very simple to make. Um, I have it in my little recipe book here and I'm also trying to film this, uh, what's going on on the, um, the chopping board with my phone suspended in my herb basket. So every now and then I'll have to show something to that phone there and now I'm going to show it the recipe and this is my recipe. Steam pudding. Two ounces or 58 grams of sugar, self-raising flour and butter. One beaten egg. You mix that all together and then you put your jam or your honey or your treacle or whatever you want in the bottom of the steam pudding basin. You put your sponge mix on the top. You fill a saucepan halfway up with hot water. No, sorry, just water. And you bring the water to the boil and then let it simmer. Sorry, water halfway up the, the pudding basin, not the saucepan. And you let that water simmer until you can insert a knife into the pudding and it comes out clean. So it's very, very simple. And to begin with, we are. I've measured the two ounces of butter. I'm just going to beat the egg. And I think I'm going to make my steam pudding a jam steam pudding, kind of autumnal black currant jam steam pudding. And although it's not really autumn anymore, I am still I'm trying to hang on to autumn. So I'm just beating the egg and I'm going to pop that in with my butter. And then I'm going to measure on my very tiny scales, I'm going to measure two ounces of flour. Let's make sure that. Okay. Two ounces or approximately 50, well, 60 grams or 58 grams of self raising flour. Okay put that in with my butter and egg and now the last thing is the sugar I think you can use brown sugar but I'm just going to use white sugar because I'm not sure how brown sugar will taste it'll probably taste a bit more treacly so now I just have to measure 58 grams or two ounces of sugar Oh, that came up quickly. I think that's it then. Just a tiny bit more. Okay, that's it. The reason I've got such a tiny scales is because in this little flat, um, there's literally no space for anything. So everything that I can get downsized, I do. And to be honest, this measures quite a lot. So although you might have to fill this little basin a lot of times, it's a pretty handy little, little gadget. So now I'm gonna take my lovely black currant jam and I think my mum said dollop uh, a good two dessert spoons into my bowl. So that's definitely a good two dessert spoons. I'm just kind of flattening it out a bit. And looking spoon. Turn my jam away. I use this nice jam. Bon maman, and which means good mother. I don't know. And now I'm going to mix up my sponge mixture, and then I'll come back to you when I'm putting it on top. So uh, I've just um, beaten the sugar, flour, egg, and butter together. I don't have a proper uh, pudding bowl, but I'm using my little enamel saucepan. I've put my jam in um, in my my pudding basin. I've also 
pop this into the empty saucepan and put, put, filled it with water so that the water comes halfway on the pudding basin and I'm now heating that water up bringing it to the boil so now I am just going to pop I'm going to pop pop I'm going to pop my sponge mixture on top of my black currant jam and it actually doesn't look enough sponge mixture so I hope my mum has given me the right quantities or I hope I've not screwed up following her recipe somehow although I don't see how I could have done and because the quantities are so simple and the recipe is so simple and that is the type of recipe I like. I like cooking as long as it's really really easy and now I'm going to try and get the last bit out with my finger which is clean pop it on there it's probably some trick you can use with like a spoon and hot water or something to smooth this up but I am just gonna have to try and do it with my this definitely looks wrong anyway with my Definitely not enough sponge. Maybe I can invent a new name for this. A new name, not sponge pudding, but sponge uh, sandwich. Although that would involve, that would require sponge underneath the jam as well. In any case, uh, I'm gonna pop, pop my jam and sponge into my saucepan and the water is pretty hot in here now oh no 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 before I do that what I've got to do is put the greaseproof paper on and make sure that no water and steam gets underneath the greaseproof paper I mean anyway I know my mum said just use string but um, I think surely sellotape is going to be more effective at least I would have thought so or maybe even packaging tape a really big elastic band that would do it no that tape doesn't work I don't think because greaseproof paper which this is 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 meant to be greasy and not stick to things like cello tape so I'm going to use my packing tape this is turning into quite a strange steam pudding but never mind I do have string. It's actually the wool I used for, I thought I was going to use for the miniatures, I don't know if you remember, to make the hair of the miniature model. So snip that off and tie the wool around the top of the greaseproof paper. I presume as tightly as you can. Mine is slipped to the bottom. <clears throat> Maybe this is why they use fabric on steam puddings because then it doesn't, the string doesn't slip on the greaseproof paper and it slipped again. Bother. Okay, I'm actually then just going to tie it underneath. Be the strangest looking steam pudding ever. And there's not even much steam pudding in it. Pop that in there. That is hot. Right, that is boiling. So I'm going to turn it down now to um, two, I think. 
because now it has to simmer. Put my water away. Fold up my flour. Put that in the sink. Put my sugar back. And I'm ready to make notes in my recipe book about the failure of this recipe. Not enough sponge mixture. Difficult to tie string and secure grease proof paper with cello tape or masking tape. I think I'll turn it to one because it's fearsome. Okay, so I'll get back to you later to tell you how it's gone. And uh, I have to nip to the shops now to do a few things. Um, I'm going to leave that on one and hope that hope that it's okay. Hmm. I can't see where I went wrong with the recipe. Two dessert spoons full of jam and two ounces of everything else and one beaten egg. Maybe my pudding, uh, my glass steam pudding bowl was too big, but then there still seems to have been too much jam. Mum, I'm gonna have to have a word with you. Okay, so I've just come back from the shops and it's been approximately an hour, which I checked with my mum. The guru of steam puddings is the requisite amount of time for a normal sized steam pudding. I think my steam pudding is on the small side, but um, I did follow her quantities and they're the quantities she usually uses for a normal sized steam pudding. So as you can hear, it's sim still simmering away. I'm going to take it off the heat uh, and put a knife into it and see if the knife comes out clean. And it's, it's so hot that um, I'm not going to take it out, although I guess I could, but I might have to put it back in to cook more. So I'm just going to put the knife straight down through the greaseproof paper, which will of course make a hole in the greaseproof paper. But um, I've, looked at, I've looked at it through the side, you see. I'm drying all the little bits of water off the top of my steam pudding. Still trying to film in here <laughs> um, with the camera in my herb basket. I'm going to put the knife straight down. I look dangerous with this knife. Okay, it's done. And the knife is almost clean. In fact, I can't tell if the moisture on the knife is from the steam or the pudding. This is, uh, this is, this is awkward. I'm gonna make a tiny bit bigger hole and make another knife hole. Uh, I'm gonna go in with the knife again. Wow. I think that's pretty good. I think it's worked. Okay. Um, so I'll just show the, the camera what it looks like there. It looks a bit anemic to be honest with you, but that's because maybe steam puddings do. Look at that. I'm going to take this across London tonight to my boyfriend and uh, I'm going to get some custard and I guess I can heat it in the microwave again and I hope you'll be impressed with my housewife, wifely skills. When I dish it out I can always leave a bit of jam in the bottom. The important thing is the sponge has risen and as I said it, the knife came out clear so I'm going to leave this to cool here. I'm going to do it with a... Let's make sure I turn that off. Um, it doesn't look very pretty. It's not like a brambly hedge steam pudding. But, you know, Later, later on, actually maybe now, I can peel the tape and, and, and paper off and then put a nice little tea towel over it and it'll look a bit prettier. The tape did nothing, by the way, the tape did nothing. String is the thing, but I still don't see how people tie it around the, around the top of the bowl because it just slip, slipped down when I did it. So, um... And put that in the bin and just leave that there. 
as looks go, this pudding is not, it's not very pretty. It's not really an Instagram worthy pudding. If you were to top it with maybe, because it's blackcurrant, uh, say berries and then creme fray or, or cream or something, then it would look quite pretty. As it is, it's a very homely looking person. Um, looking pudding. Looking pudding. And so uh, this is my first attempt at baking. And next time I will be cooking uh, a healthy winter kind of stew hot pot with lentils and pulses and things for protein and also some vegetables. And hopefully it will take only a few minutes longer to prepare than, than uh, the steam pudding and it will take a lot less time to cook because this took an hour to cook whereas my winter stew will take it's actually more of a winter stir fry really uh, because then that retains the goodness of the vegetables and you don't cook them to death and that'll take about 10 or 15 minutes so um, join me then people